Mark, Air Partner have just reported record half-year results. Can you give us an overview? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Um, as you rightly pointed out, they are record results for the six months that are under review. Um, we reported profit before tax of 10.5 million, which is up 250% on the same period as last year. Now, this was driven exceptionally by our group charter division and our freight side of the business, where we've been heavily involved in repatriating our customers from stricken areas across the world, as well as our freight business, which has been heavily involved with PPE, again across the world. However, like all these things, not every part of our business has fired in the way we wanted it to fire, such as private jets, which has really found it challenging throughout this uh, difficult time, particularly where we've had high net worth individuals not flying as much and corporate customers also not doing the same, as well as our safety division, which has also really struggled through this time, uh, mainly driven by um, discretionary spend uh, no longer being required or being needed uh, on the safety, which I find incredible actually. Having said all that, our strategy of being diversified across many product lines as well as geographies has certainly served us well and have contributed to all these, towards these results at the half year. And finally, the board has recommended a, an interim dividend payment of 0 0.8 pence. And this is all driven by recognising the results, recognising the shareholder support and trying to get our shareholders to understand we are trying to get back onto the dividend trail. So what have been the highlights in the first half? Yeah, um, let's start with our group charter and freight performance. Um, look, we've always prided ourselves on being able to act quickly in, in times of need. Um, and our infrastructure is also built that way at the same time. So we were notified really early on with some of the evacuation work we were doing out of Wuhan um, that things would get pretty serious here. Um, and you know we saw the severity of what was really going on. So our group charter team were, have been heavily involved in repatriating people, not just out of Wuhan, but right across the world, either into um, the United States, into UK and into Europe. And the ability to react extremely quickly in a, in a time of need is really where we are so infrastructure and geared towards doing. Um, and it's absolutely served us well over these past six months. But also our government contracts have worked extremely well for us, along with the sports teams, which have had to continue to fly due to these times where they can't take public transport and all the trains. Um, so the need to charter has also been critical, but also to give um, our customers the comfort that the, the aeroplanes are and the crew have been COVID tested or COVID free. So they, they get on an aeroplane and don't feel, oh my word, you know, are we gonna catch the virus? So we've been heavily involved in doing some of that work as well. That's on the group charter side. Now onto the freight side, um, you know, significant work through PPE, but what we've been able to do here is actually get our global network working together, where we've had some of our offices helping other offices provide the supply to enable our customers to move quickly to get their equipment out of where they need to get out to in Asia, to get it back to where they need to get it back to in country. So that's also been really important and really critical as well. Having said all that, those I've alluded to earlier on the private jet side, um, it's fired well in America, but in Europe, been, in, been significantly impacted as a result of people just not wanting to use as many private jets as they had before. We had a busy summer season, but had a very slow start, and we expect the winter side to be pretty slow as well in Europe, but more encouraging in, in the USA. On the safety and security side, um, let's start with uh, Redline in security. So with Redline, whilst the covert testing at airports because the footfall has fallen, the long-term contracts that they have in place, such as UPS, as well as some of the really good contracts that they've won, such as the CAA, um, and some of the new airports that they've won as well at the same time, as long as the business that they've secured in Australia, working with ISS, has served them well. So these long-term contracts are coming into play and are serving well, offsetting the uh, covert testing area of the business where you've had the footfall falling because people are just not traveling. On the safety side, where we have Bain Simmons, what I would say here is, is that due to the area of consulting and training and discretionary spend with airlines not wishing to spend money um, that has naturally significantly impacted the business however there is some really good business which has been going on with the isle of man jet registry uh, which we have that contract until 2026 
And that served us very well throughout this pandemic. And we continue to offer an exceptional service, albeit it's gone virtual now, rather than it having to have um, auditors on the ground auditing airplanes due to the pandemic. And on the training side, what we're trying to do in safety is we're trying to turn it more into an e-learning offering as well as a virtual learning offering, still offering the classroom opportunities, but we feel going more virtual and e-learning is more likely the way to go as we go forwards. Let's talk about fatigue risk, which is clockwork. Um, our colleagues there have been exceptionally busy throughout this period of time and have really done extremely well working with some large corporate companies you know, offering consultancy as well as advice around how their staff are being treated, how the uh, sleep patterns are working. And that's almost been pretty much COVID free all the way through. And we see those results in that business carrying on all the way through the winter months as well at the same time. So as you can see, just in encapsulating what we're doing, with such a diverse strategy, you can see various parts of the business that are performing well, other parts where we have challenges, but other parts where we, you can see we're very much lined up for recovery as and when the market does start to recover. One other real highlight of performance um, of the six months is our jet car product. Basically, JetCard has increased by 50% on the same period, JetCard sales, than what we did last year. And really, in short, um, JetCard is, is like an Oyster card, where you put money onto a card which buys you so many hours, which allows you to use the card almost instantaneously if you need to get yourself home or you require a flight to go anywhere. And what we're finding here is, is that we're getting more customers inquiring and taking the card as an insurance policy for any event of when they may get stuck down routes, if the government decides to close the border, they can use the car to get themselves home extremely quickly without having to worry about, um, are they going to get an aeroplane? Are they going to get on a British Airways flight or whatever flight to try and get themselves back? So this car program now is we're seeing a, a real change in how people are using it. So not all the card sales up, the utilisation is encouraging the being utilised quite highly as well at the same time which we're seeing as a real positive, And we expect that momentum to continue on into H2. Let me move on to our, one of our geographic expansions, which is Singapore. So we announced Singapore early in the year, um, which again is a strategic um, opportunity for us where we believe that we need to be in Asia and we need to be developing that market, albeit extremely slowly, understanding the current market conditions in what's going on and the economic climate. But we've added a further person into that office just recently. And again, this is all about helping us provide supply to the market as and when the demand starts to increase, but also to get a much more an intelligence of what's going on in that market as well at the same time. And finally, I want to make a point of saying we raised money. We did a fundraise um, uh, in June uh, and we, the fundraising was oversubscribed. Uh, and through that fundraise, we raised 7.5 million of new and existing shareholder money. And what this has been able to do for us, it's allowed us to repay back the debt, um, the money that we borrowed to buy Redline. Um, and as a result of that, we are now debt free uh, with a very strong cash position which will support our strategy in how we move forwards. COVID-19 has clearly had a significant impact on the global aviation industry. What action has Air Partner taken to best position itself for the future? Yeah, so, so very, very early on when we were doing these early evacuations out of Wuhan, as well as the uh, Japanese cruise liner, we, we realised working through government how serious this, this was going to be. So our actions were really swift as an executive team and board of how we moved. So we moved through the, through the gears of actually making people um, work short weeks, particularly in the UK. Uh, we all took a, a salary reduction. Um, that's all the directors, the, the, our people, as well as the senior management team, uh, all based in the UK for a, for a three month period. Um, we exercised the uh, government um, grants that were given to us, uh, that were on offer, I should say, in Europe. Um, and, and as a result of that, and then we looked at our business and looked at the areas where we felt weren't going to recover. And we've taken action right through the organisation, looking at absolutely everything really, really closely, as well as making sure we, there is no discretionary spend. We've naturally reduced our travel in accordance to you know, the need to travel around the world uh, or unable to travel at the same time. And as a result of that, we've kept things extremely tight. 
um, which, as you can see, has, has served ourselves well. So it's, we really got ourselves ahead of the game extremely early. And we continue to monitor the situation almost on a weekly basis just to make sure yeah, we're not falling behind and not just getting too carried away. So what's in the pipeline for our partner? Yeah, so there's still some really good opportunities out there. Um, if I start in America, as you can see, the results, 45% of gross profit has been generated out of these numbers in America. We want to continue to hire um, the people that are out there, the really good people, which we know there are some that are knocking on our door. So we're looking forward to bringing them into the family. Um, we've also um, dipped our toe in the water in South Africa, in Johannesburg, where we've um, taken on board um, an individual to help us to see and understand the market and to try and see if there's any opportunities. Um, and last but not least, um, acquisitions. You know, we still have some opportunities uh, on the safety and security side on the acquisition trail, which we're exploring to see um, if we can potentially land one or two of those before the end of our financial year. So how is current trading? Um, well, clearly, um, the second half, um, I don't anticipate it being as strong as the first half. However, having said that, there are still many opportunities out there that we're going after and chasing, as you'd expect, from charter to safety and security. But the visibility still remains really limited, as limited as it was before, um, coupled with lots of challenges through, through the virus and COVID-19. Having said that, if there is a spike and demand comes up on PPE, or we need to get people home, or corporate shuttles are required, um, etc. I, I, I would say we are well positioned to take those opportunities. But as one would say, um, we've got four months to go, still a lot of work to be done. And you know, we're hopeful. Um, but it's just the visibility and unpredictability, which, which makes a degree of uncertainty within, within where we are. <laughs>